July 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 13 through 15 of the Old Testament. In the 18th year of the reign of King Jeroboam, Abijah became king over Judah. He ruled for three years in Jerusalem. His mother was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel from Gibeah. There was a war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah launched the attack with 400,000 well-trained warriors, while Jeroboam deployed against him 800,000 well-trained warriors. Abijah ascended Mount Zeraim in the Ephraimite hill country and said, Listen to me, Jeroboam, and all Israel. Don't you realize that the Lord God of Israel has given David and his dynasty lasting dominion over Israel by a formal agreement? Jeroboam, son of Nebat, a servant of Solomon, son of David, rose up and rebelled against his master. Lawless good-for-nothing men gathered around him and conspired against Rehoboam, son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was an inexperienced young man and could not resist them. Now you are declaring that you will resist the Lord's rule through the Davidic dynasty? You have a huge army and bring with you the gold calves that Jeroboam made for you as gods. But you banished the Lord's priest, Aaron's descendants, and the Levites, and appointed your own priest just as the surrounding nations do. Anyone who comes to consecrate himself with a young bull or seven rams becomes a priest of these fake gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not rejected him. Aaron's descendants serve as the Lord's priest, and the Levites assist them with the work. They offer burnt sacrifices to the Lord every morning and every evening, along with fragrant incense. They arrange the bread of the presence on a ritually clean table and light the lamps on the gold lampstand every evening. Certainly we are observing the Lord, our God's regulations, but you have rejected him. Now look, God is with us as our leader. His priests are ready to blow the trumpets to signal the attack against you, you Israelites, don't fight against the Lord God of your ancestors, for you will not win. Now Jeroboam had sent some men to ambush the Judite army from behind. The main army was in front of the Judite army. The ambushers were behind it. The men of Judah turned around and realized they were being attacked from the front and the rear. So they cried out for help to the Lord. The priests blew their trumpets, and the men of Judah gave the battle cry. As the men of Judah gave the battle cry, the Lord struck down Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. The Israelites fled from before the Judahite army, and God handed them over to the men of Judah. Abijah and his army thoroughly defeated them. 500,000 well-trained Israelite men fell dead. That day the Israelites were defeated. The men of Judah prevailed because they relied on the Lord God of their ancestors. Abijah chased Jeroboam. He seized from him these cities, Bethel and its surrounding towns, Jeshanah and its surrounding towns, and Ephron and its surrounding towns. Jeroboam did not regain power during the reign of Abijah. The Lord struck him down and he died. Abijah's power grew. He had 14 wives and fathered 22 sons and 16 daughters. The rest of the events of Abijah's reign, including his deeds and sayings, are recorded in the writings of the prophet Iddo. Abijah passed away and was buried in the city of David. His son Asa replaced him as king. During his reign, the land had rest for 10 years. Asa did what the Lord his God desired and approved. He removed the pagan altars in the high places, smashed the sacred pillars, and cut down the Asherah poles. He ordered Judah to seek the Lord God of their ancestors and to observe his law and commands. He removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah. The kingdom had rest under his rule. He built fortified cities throughout Judah, for the land was at rest and there was no war during those years. The Lord gave him peace. He said to the people of Judah, Let's build these cities and fortify them with walls, towers, and barred gates. The land remains ours because we have followed the Lord our God, and he has made us secure on all sides. 
so they built the cities and prospered. Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah, equipped with large shields and spears. He also had 280,000 men from Benjamin, who carried small shields and were adept archers. They were all skilled warriors. Zerah the Cushite marched against them with an army of one million men and 300 chariots. He arrived at Marisha, and Asa went out to oppose him. They deployed for battle in the valley of Zephatha near Marisha. Asa prayed to the Lord his God, O Lord, there is no one but you who can help the weak when they are vastly outnumbered. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you and have marched on your behalf against this huge army. O Lord our God, don't let men prevail against you. The Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled, and Asa and his army chased them as far as Gerar. The Cushites were wiped out. They were shattered before the Lord and his army. The men of Judah carried off a huge amount of plunder. They defeated all the cities surrounding Gerar, for the Lord caused them to panic. The men of Judah looted all the cities, for they contained a huge amount of goods. They also attacked the tents of the herdsmen in charge of the livestock. They carried off many sheep and camels and then returned to Jerusalem. God's spirit came upon Azariah, son of Obed. He met Asa and told him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are loyal to him. If you seek him, he will respond to you. But if you reject him, he will reject you. For a long time, Israel had no true God or priest to instruct them or law. Because of their distress, they turned back to the Lord God of Israel. They sought him and he responded to them. In those days, no one could travel safely, for total chaos had overtaken all the people of the surrounding lands. One nation was crushed by another and one city by another, for God caused them to be in great turmoil. But as for you, be strong and don't get discouraged, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words in the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he was encouraged. He removed the detestable idols from the entire land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities he had seized in the Ephraimite hill country. He repaired the altar of the Lord in front of the porch of the Lord's temple. He assembled all Judah and Benjamin, as well as the settlers from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had come to live with them. Many people from Israel had come there to live when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. They assembled in Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. At that time they sacrificed to the Lord some of the plunder they had brought back, including 700 head of cattle and 7,000 sheep. They solemnly agreed to seek the Lord God of their ancestors with their whole heart and being. Anyone who would not seek the Lord God of Israel would be executed, whether they were young or old, male or female. They swore their allegiance to the Lord, shouting their approval loudly and sounding trumpets and horns. All Judah was happy about the oath because they made the vow with their whole heart. They willingly sought the Lord and he responded to them. He made them secure on every side. King Asa also removed Maacah, his grandmother, from her position as queen mother because she had made a loathsome Asherah pole. Asa cut down her Asherah pole and crushed and burned it in the Kidron Valley. The high places were not eliminated from Israel, yet Asa was wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord throughout his lifetime. He brought the holy items that his father and he had made into God's temple, including the silver, gold, and other articles. There was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. God, I, I wish that all of the newspapers and news sites and everybody who declares things going on around the world, I wish the headlines would say what uh, chapter 13 verse 12 says. Don't fight against the Lord God of your ancestors for you will not win. I think I need to make t-shirts that say that. Ah, 
it's getting so frustrating, God. It's getting so frustrating to watch people can people convince themselves that you uh, don't exist, that you might exist, but they can do whatever they want to, or you definitely exist, and they claim themselves a, as Christians, and they still do as they so wish. Uh, again, tearing down the other people, watching them act this way as Christians. Don't fight against the Lord God of your ancestors. You will not win. <laughs> ah, I love that. I probably should go post that on Facebook right now. God, I, I do know that you reign sovereign. I do know that you're in control of the world. I can look at the littlest thing, the tiniest little seashell when I'm walking on the beach every day. Or I can look at the vastness of the stars and the light that took me took so long to reach me that night. And I can look at my own life and just see reflections and, and fingerprints of you all over everything in this world. How in the world we became so arrogant as to think that we are better than you, know more than you, are mightier than you. How arrogant do we have to be to think that we can go up against you or denounce that you don't even exist? I live in a place that has more atheists per capita, capita than any place else in the United States. <laughs> Lucky me. But it is a blessing to be put in this place because it gives me an opportunity to talk to people. It gives me an opportunity to show what my world looks like with you in it. And I don't, I don't really believe that there's any such thing as atheist. You have to believe in something. That doesn't even make sense. You can't look around this world and not think that something exists. I will respect somebody who says they're agnostic and have conversations, but that's just dumb to say you're an atheist. Ah, people. God reigns so supreme in my life. Give me a heart that humbles before you so that other people can watch my life and see how big you are and how small I am. And how without you, I couldn't do a single thing in this world. That it is all about you. It's all about your mightiness. It's all about your sovereignty. It's all about your grace, your endless mercy. God, allow people to look at my life and see you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.